Hey, what's going on everybody? This is the VG Pierce. I'll be coming at you with a gameplay review of The Curious Expedition. This is going to be developed by the people of Machine and Mensch. And so this is a procedurally generated roguelike expedition simulation set in the late 19th century. Together with famous personalities, you will venture on expeditions to regions never explored before for fame, science, and of course, loads of treasures. I will say this is a very solid game, so if you're thinking about picking this up, go ahead and do so. But beware though, out of the 10 plus hours of this game that I have played already, it did crash the desktop about 2 or 3 times already, and some of the things, uh, you know, it just kind of like your, your cursor kind of hangs, and so you have to restart it, stuff like that. But otherwise, a very good game. And we are definitely going to check out all that it has to offer. Of course, it does go through a little bit of tutorial. But F that, guys. Just jump to a new game. Here's going to be the replayability. You get to unlock a couple of people by, you know, finishing a game first. Or by, you know, finishing an expedition with having three natives in your trek. And things like that. So you will be able to choose between loads of famous explorers in our time. Like Charles Darwin. Uh, I guess Marie Curie as well. Kind of a uh, different... <laughs> I guess take on things. Um, I did see like Harriet Tubman as well. Uh, you get Ada Lovelace and uh, and Frederick Courtney Sellis. So maybe some names you haven't really heard of before. And I guess also authors really count as well. H.P. Lovecraft for that Lovecraftian lore there. And this game is not a very easy game to play. It's a very easy game to get and have the concept, but overall beating this game. Not very easy, and you'll see in just a second, but we are going to go into it. Let's go ahead and check out and become one of these guys here. We're going to jump into an expedition, and we are going to start this puppy up. Actually, I want to show you a little bit more of these guys here. So, Charles Darwin, these are going to be the guys that you're going to start off with here. So, at this bottom left, these are the people that you'll start off with, and then at the bottom right, these are the items that you will also begin with as well as having a kind of a different little thing that they'll have as well so they'll all this one has a butterfly enthusiast he'll gain sanity every time he collects it here allows one to rest in native villages without standing costs so each one of them has something a little bit different actually a couple of them has the same thing I don't really like that too much I kinda would rather have a bunch of different people with a whole bunch of different types of skills there so I think Isabella Bird is here, there, there we go, Ada Lovelace, He's a, she's a polymath, and so she will choose five perks opposed to three, and there's going to be another person just like that here, Marie Curie. So, I kind of wish that they all had something different, whereas these two kind of share the same thing, except they have different start-off people that they begin with. And you can also get animals, dogs, donkeys, you can even get dinosaurs in this game as well. It's just some, and some mythical creatures. It's just a lot of crazy stuff that could actually happen in this game, Necronomicon, that you can go and fish up. Maybe some helpful things, you never know. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so we're just going to start off with Charles Darwin. I'm going to get some whiskeys to help get, refill the sanity, have some torches, begin with a nice shotgun, and also have a machete to cut down some woods, and begin with a soldier to help me fight, and translator to help me communicate, and maybe get better deals, and a donkey that will bring some crates in for my storage. Now I will say that the storage in this game, that is the rub of this game, is planning and equipping your trek. Because if you are not prepared for what's going to happen, then you will lose this game. Now here at the right side, it's kind of a race. So this is kind of putting you back in the 19th century where you are pretty much seeing who is going to be the best explorer and you're just going to be comparing I guess EPs like oh look at me I got the best loot guys and so you'll be go going up against all of these people here so it's going to change every single time so this time it's Mary Kingsley and Amelia Earhart and Aless Alistair Crowley and Harriet Tubman like I said before these are going to be the different types of people and then this is going to be the difficulty here so I do recommend you going on expedition even for the first time this game isn't really that difficult to pick up and here in the beginning, later on you'll have some choices, but in the beginning you're just going to have this one choice. Here's the looming jungle and it will have these two tiles and it will show you exactly what you'll be kind of looking for. 
So at the beginning, they will always have a beginning quest for you. It's up to you to accept or refuse. But it's almost always best for you to just accept it because otherwise you won't gain as much fame, you won't get as much money, and in the end, you won't be able to win the game that way. So we're going to set sail. We're going to have the escorting the missionary quest. And this is going to be Expedition 1. Expedition 1 is always going to be the easiest. And as you can see here, I'm going to go scroll back out. And you see these lit up areas right here? This is going to be my area that I'll be able to traverse in. Now this is kind of small. Two squares. Later on you'll be able to, see, to just go and trek through three, three by three squares. Stuff like that. And it does get a lot larger of an area. So here in the beginning, I can refill some water. So if I go and jump through some desert tiles or what have you, then I will have water to drink. And this really comes into place because the sanity bar at the top really matters a lot because if it goes to zero, then after a while, my people will just go crazy on you. They'll start like wanting to kill you. They'll start wanting to kill themselves. They'll leave your group, stuff like that. They'll just go insane. And then after a while, you just start to lose the game. You can't accept... Uh, you can access the ship storage here. Uh, this, this is just in case you brought something that you didn't really need for this trek. Like, you know, if I was going into the desert, I don't need all these machete, right? And But right now, I do need all that stuff. So we're just going to continue on here. And I already grabbed up my water, which I don't think I need. But that's okay. It's free anyway. So let's go ahead and begin up the expedition, Sister Rodea. And this is definitely one thing I definitely recommend for you. Read everything. If you're skimming, make sure you skim properly because otherwise you will end up missing things and <laughs> you don't want to miss those things there so she did mark on the map this is where i want to go the native village right there obviously first map real simple and here this is all line of sight so anywhere here like this question mark is going to be somewhere that you want to end up at this is where you want to go and end up and see what i can find but since i am trying to do my first mission here escort missionary to the native village then i want to go ahead and do that you definitely want to finish your quest first and then go and get all the artifacts you can and again just compare ep now these are the, on the left side conveniently for you these are all the negative things that and they also show the positive things as well that you will have for your personnel and so far it's i only have one negative personnel which is kind of bad really bad start there but that's okay Indigenous diplomacy increased sanity gain when resting in villages. So that's going to be the nice thing here. And that's for your whole people. That's not just for that person. It's for your whole deal. So it's as if they all help you out. Increases the gain in sanity when drinking whiskey. And so this is the whiskey right there. This is going to be great. So when I do drink more whiskey, then hey, I'm going to get more sanity. And it always starts out full right there. And here at the right this is my standing with the native people so if this goes a little bit too negative they will hunt you down and they're gonna gut you boy <laughs> they are gonna gut you and their sister Rodea she will have a strong mind so increased maximum sanity and allows rest for free admissions and this is my donkey here the capacity they all have little capacities to carry items so one is going to be better than the others here. But of course, your donkey, that is going to be your mule. <laughs> and he is going to be the one that's carrying the most stuff. All right, let's go ahead and travel along. So as you can see, the tiles here always makes a difference. So if I traverse through this jungle there, as you can see, there's already a cut mark. That's because I have a machete. So when I move through it, I will cut down the trees and then move through it with greater ease. And so less sanity will be used because of that. Now, if I didn't have a machete and I walk through the trees areas, then what happens is that I will lose a little bit more sanity than normal. But because I do have these machetes for me to use, then it will use up less sanity. And now I don't have to go around it. Now, the nice thing is that the cursor will automatically go around it as you can see here but you know not a big deal i think i'm just going to go ahead and move forth as you can see as i continue on line of sight here is showing me everything now there are things there are items that helps you gain more line of sight so you don't have to worry about that and there's other things that help you see like a specific area there's loads of items in this game that you can get and we're about to check it out right now so what i'm going to do is enter the village and finish off my first mission and that will help me on the way so now I am gonna finish off this here delivery missionary and then I will have a plus two standing because I did complete that and that's great 
So now, as you can see at the top right, my standing now is at 3. And then, as you can see at the bottom right, it can get as low as minus 10 or as high as plus 10. So that's pretty nice stuff. And as you can see, you can kind of hover over the little villagers. And these are all the people that are kind of hanging out right next to you. So if I wanted to see what's going on in the village, then I can. <laughs> and here's the village chief. Look at that. It's a female fetty. And these are things you kind of have to pay attention to as well, because if I do spend the night there, then they might ask you, hey, look, do you think men or women are better? Well, it kind of matters because you could offend the natives if, say, the chief is female right there. So you kind of have to pay attention to these little details every so often. You don't want to rush through everything, but lots of times you can. But again, you just want to skim, but skim at the right pace. That's the real key, okay? So now I can go ahead and trade with the natives. Like I said, loads of stuff here. Now the cocoa leaves, I can adjust that to refill some sanity as it says. But the bad thing is that it could have negative effects to your people. Like making them become insane. Or it could actually have positive effects. You never know. Anytime you adjust anything, anytime you do anything, it could be really bad. Alright, so I will go ahead and grab these berries. Actually, no, I, I won't grab anything because I have nothing to trade. Yeah, I don't. All right, so let's go ahead and cancel. i just kind of show you that. I could recruit, and since I do have a more positive standing, then I might find somebody here. And oh, look at that. I'm, I'm, I could get a water buffalo. And the water buffalo, instead of this donkey having three capacity, this water buffalo actually has four of them. So that's pretty nice. Or I can go with this here, Solari, this animal handler and he will get the animal capacity plus one but the bad thing here is that at the end of this uh, of this expedition he may or may not go back it just really depends here you go to shaman so these are the different types of dice that you can have and we're going to talk about the dice a little bit later on there I just like, you know what, let's talk about the dice right now so here as you can see for charles darwin he's got blue dice and then green dice well the green dice is more for defensive measures the blues are kind of like how much mind and observation so these are kind of eyes here and this is using the mind here so there are different things that augments it and it plays into whenever you're in a fight it will carry combinations and it will have different types of effects that may happen in the fight and of course i can't really show it to you but i just kind of give you a little small explanation right there i will get in the fight and i will show you that in just a moment but first let's go ahead and pick up the shaman you can only recruit one person unless you have some type of item or some type of special ability that allows you to recruit two people but for right now you can i'm going to get the, the native shaman and you can only have a maximum of five people in your party as far as i know i'm going to go ahead and rest up and see if maybe some special head things happen in here but no so i will get back my 22 sanity here and then because i spent the night then they're like oh they looked at me and they're like, hey, you're, you're like different. So I lost a little bit of standing there. And now I'm going to have to shove on out. I have one standing, which is pretty good. So let's go ahead and leave this area. Stay behind to talk to these people. Okay, okay, talk to these guys. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. All right, so now the next place I probably want to go is to the thick jungle over there. But I want to check out this question mark. So let's go ahead and do that. Move down there. And all you need to do is just be one hexagon away from them to actually explore a cave you don't need to be on top of it you could be but it, it'd be a little bit of a waste so here is going to be the difference so as long as i have these items in my inventory then that will make things a little bit harder or easier now if i explore darkness and i do not roll this eyeball and as you can see here this tells you how much of a chance you have by looking at all the dice you have and it's kind of a little bit less than 50 percent that i'm going to roll this right here exploring the darkness so let's go ahead and get the guaranteed i do have three torches in my inventory light the torch and explore and here now i will move on and i did find some bones here in this cavern we're going to investigate the remains once in a while your people might say hey guys i don't know something about this place makes me uneasy now you can heed the warning but right now it's not a big deal pull yourself together all right so here i'm going to grab up five machete and then five climbing gear great so let's go ahead and take all and go on out of here and that's it you can't move past mountains unless you have dynamite to blow them up but otherwise you'll be free to go let's go ahead and move around the bottom and all right great that actually worked out well because 
I actually found another little spot. So let's go ahead and move on there. And as you can see, this is a different type of area. So this is a stone inspecting the mysterious man-made stone statue. I see some items by the statue. Now you can examine the loot, but you may have some negative modifiers here because you will anger the gods if you touch anything here. And this is the native shaman that I had picked up. And so he may not like it if I took these items away from this shrine, this weird looking shrine but oh look at this i could get some horn flutes that'll help me chase away the wildlife and some cocoa leaves that'll help me refill sanity that's really really great here because after a while the sanity will be a problem not so much in this first area but yes definitely a lot later on now i am just gonna leave that alone because i don't necessarily need the items and plus i don't want to piss off my shaman right i don't want i don't want to do all that yet yet <laughs> All right, so we're going to move along. Okay, here's some butterflies there. So since I'm Charles Darwin, I do gain sanity every time I collect a butterfly. And again, all you need to do is be one hexagon near it, and that's all I need to do. So because of that, I did explore an area. And because of here, I did do that. As you see here, exploration points. That allows me to help level up my people. And if I do that, they will get more toughness. I see this is their HP. And this is going to be their dice. This will level up as well. We're going to move on here. And you can cancel the travel. That's definitely what you need to do is make sure that you have your hand pretty quickly on this cancel the travel so that you can make sure that you don't go too far or anything kind of sneaks up on you. You'll be able to stop just in time. All right, so let's go ahead and explore this cave as well. I'm going to light the torch because anyways, all right, look at that. More remains. We're delighted to see one of the corpses hanging on to some useful equipment. Oh, some ripe rope and some chocolate rations. All right, great. Let's find out what comes up now. Now look at this. I'm at 33, 33 sanity. And as you can see here, there's a number wherever I place this cursor at. And this tells me, oh, look, I'm going to spend 16 sanity if I move here. In fact, the little marker on my bar will actually tell me how it will be or where it will be when I do move. Now, I'm going to move to this last spot here and check it out before I refill my sanity. This might be where I need to go. And yes, it's going to be a shrine. So let's go ahead and examine the shrine. This is going to be something that you'll definitely need to pay attention to is I can swear I can hear the sound of rushing water beneath our feet. Now, this is a clue here. This is a type of trap that could happen if I do take the treasure here from the altar. Now, if I do take it, then bad things will happen. However, as you can see here, the golden bowl and the golden goblet there at the bottom right, I get fame and also I can sell it for $40 and that's pretty nice. You know what? I'm going to take them both. All right. And now when I did grab it, water burst from the fountains and now it's going to try to drown us. Not only that, but I gain negative standing with the natives and that's really bad. As you can see here, the water is just going to erupt, spread around. Now, if I'm caught in any of this water area, then it will wash me away, and I may lose some of these items that I had so, so hard gain, okay? But I did make it here to the Golden Pyramid. I only have two sanity left, but this, this is the end. This All you need to do is get to the Golden Pyramid and make it in there and then explore it, and that's it, and that's all you need to do. Now, sometimes some expeditions aren't as easy as that, Sometimes you have to go and unlock some things, you know, you have to turn on something before you can get into the pyramid. But here, since it's the first level, I'm just going to stroll on in there. And this guy here, okay, since I did get a native person, I will need to convince him. So let's go ahead and roll. And unfortunately, my roll sucked really badly. And he's just going to go and stay with his people. So here's a really cool thing here. I can actually hit open report. It'll take me to a website and it'll tell me exactly the timeline of everything that happened during my expedition. It's really cool. And then you can just print it out like, look at me, guys. Or, you know, you can just show your, you know, next of kin or something. I don't know. It's keeping you well. <laughs> Who knows? But still, you can just go and check out the website. Maybe post it somewhere. Like, look at this, guys. This is what I found. It's really awesome. So speed bonus first. There, there was a little timeline here on the left side. I'll show you that again later on. Now when you do finish the exp expedition, there are several expeditions that you have to go to in this race to the end. And every time I do get to the end, I can choose between three medals. As you saw in the beginning of the game, there was two people that had a perk where you chose between five medals. So survive a little longer when all alone, receive an additional support die, or promote characters. Promoting characters improves their loyalty towards you. 
So, loyalty is pretty important in this game. If you don't do all the time what they say, then they will go crazy on you again, and they will either leave you, or they will try to kill you, or kill one of your other people. Who knows? Alright, but, uh, we're gonna go with receiving an additional support die. It's gonna be great. And so now, I will have an ex another support die. I'm gonna try to get to a battle for you to show you exactly how the dice works and it's really cool but first now at the end I have to decide now this is the race I was talking about and this is gonna be the five people one of them is myself and then I'm competing against these other four people this is Mary Kingsley she's in front right now with 382 fame I'm second place with 310 and then Amelia Earhart 272 and then so on and so forth now if I do want to gift anything I get fame if I want to sell anything to the auction, then I'll get much needed money so that I can purchase things for my next expedition. So this is my butterfly connection collection, and this is this is not valued very much. So let's go ahead and keep that. Now this, now here I can check it out. So this one gives me fame 50 and funds 40, and here golden bowl fame 70 and funds 40. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this one here to the museum because this is worth 70. And it'll help me up on the fame track. And I'll just, I'm just too away from Mary Kingsley. Now, if I wanted to, I can gain 50 fame and go past her and gift it to the museum. Or I could sell it in the auction house for $40. But, uh, you know, I need money here. 70, and that's going to be good enough to actually get my next mission. So now I have a choice here. I can go to the malicious jungle, or I can go to the Tiki Taka jungle. Well balanced region consisting mostly of wide grasslands. And these are the things you have to pay attention to. This, this is also a well balanced region, mostly wide grasslands. Golden Pyramid can be found in this region. So these are the things you want to take note of so that you'll know exactly what to bring in the little bit. So let's go ahead and get to the malicious jungle because why not? So here in this next one, this museum curator says, Hey, I want you to find instruments for me on your trek. Okay, so let's go ahead and accept that up. And every single time in between, you can get a, another person on your trip. So let's go ahead and do it. Like I said, you can only have a total of five people and also animals on your trek with you. So these are the kind of things you need to consider. And look at this. This guy, he's got whiskey experts, so I don't want to get rid of him. Ooh, but this guy here, he's a diplomat. Decreases prices when bartering. I think I like that. Let's go ahead and do that. And then combat, sanity gained from fighting but he's racist so they will fight against other people not his race i don't want to have anyone with that negative trait i don't like any racist people here get out of here so let's go ahead and do this so animal improvement like i said you can pay and get extra extra storage for you here i can get plus one capacity but no thanks i only have 70 right now i'm gonna go and purchase equipment that's gonna be real key now i can't sell anything but i can buy things now I need first aid kits, I need all this stuff actually. So we aren't gonna get too crazy too much. I only got one torch left and as you saw there, I, I actually used up a bunch. So let's go ahead and grab up two more torches and then I'm gonna grab up five of these. You know, let's go ahead and get zero. So I'm gonna grab six chocolate rations. Let's go ahead and deal. And then let's go ahead and set sail. All right, so we are going to be shoving off to Expedition 2. It's going to generate, like I said, it's all procedurally generated. Every single map is different from one another. And that is the really nice thing. Loads of replayability in this game. So let's go ahead and jump in. Early morning, plus one standing. As you can see, again, 100 sanity. And I don't need to refill the water because I didn't even use it the last bit access to storage so I don't need to bring my butterfly collection let's go ahead and drop that off here and I can go back here and check out the the lay of the land and see how this is gonna look climbing gears there's really isn't that much hills around here so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna return to ship and then access the ship storage and then drop off my climbing gear I don't really need it and so I'm gonna go ahead and clear the space so let's go ahead and do that. Now I can just stay here the rest overnight. But no, I just started, so let me just jump in there. I'm going to keep the rope though, because I might need that a little bit later on. Alright, so here I need to go and find instruments. Any instrument at all. I can find it at the village and buy it off somebody. I could just find it in a cave. Who knows? So now I'm just going to shove off and look around. 
every so often I like to kind of look back and these are the mountains you can see that now if you want to make sure that you see a lot more of the area what you need to do is make sure that you jump into an area where you can kind of look out from and then you'll be a whole lot better off for it so I'm gonna maybe look for a hill or something uh, I don't see any so here at the compass, you can see that this compass is kind of waving all around like crazy. Now this kind of tells you a very general direction, as you can see, of where the Golden Pyramid is. And here is going to be the timeline there, so that whoever finishes from their expedition first, you gain extra little bit of fame. But don't worry about that too much, unless you have some type of thing that gives you some type of race to actually finish it off. I'm going to try to get into a fight if I can, so I can show you these dices. And uh, so far, nothing doing. Let's go over here and jump into this old camp. Search the area. And it did take a day, but now I did loot it up. Alright, so I get some stuff here to help me out. Sweet. I actually don't need this water, so let's go ahead and dump that. Alright, so here we go. We got gorilla. Let's go ahead and attack this gorilla. Now, if I don't hit the attack and he jumps on me, then he'll get the preemptive strike. But if I hit the attack, then I will get the preemptive strike. So this is a very difficult one here because he's got 18 toughness and there's two of these gorillas. So this is actually a very difficult fight and I'm probably going to lose. But for the sake of showing you what these dice rolls really mean, now I'm going to show you. So because I have the shotgun, I got this extra roll. And here it kind of, and, and, and the faces correspond when you hover over it, who gets what and why. So here, this is from Charles Darwin here, and this is also from Charles Darwin, more from Charles Darwin. This red die is from my soldier here, Boyd McLean. So each one of these really makes a big difference in your role. So here, as you can see, if I choose a sword, it will give me attack. But here, as these trembling die means that, hey, you know, there's more that I can add to it. Now, if I add up this one, double attack, that means I get two damage on it. But if I add this here, then it gets precise attack. And as you see, damage three. So these are the things you have to really watch out for to actually do a lot better in your game. Not only that, but I can hold on to the die. Look, so so all these are all the things I rolled up. So let's go ahead and keep this dice, and I can re-roll it. See, at the top, tells me how many rolls I have left. So I rolled all blanks there. Let's go ahead and re-roll it one more time, and I just got a shield. But because of that, I can actually pick that shield up and get repost. And also, I can choose this other one here and get cutting repost. So there we go. So I'm going to do that. Cutting repost. I'm going to attack. And, what, and, look, and this is what I'm going to be aiming at here. And I'm also going to get two shields. So when they attack me, the shields come to play. But look, these are also trembling as well. So let's go ahead and pick that one. That's the mine. And the eyeball. So that's lookout. So I get plus two, two shield. No more rolls left. So this is going to be it. Let's go ahead and grab that. I'll get plus two to the shield. And that's it. So now I have to end the round. And now it's going to be the gorilla's turn to hit me. And as you can see there, he's just penetrating easily through my defense and is wrecking my world and actually stunning my guys so because they're stunned then these dies aren't gonna count in the roll and I am in big doo-doo now I can flee but when I flee I may or may not lose items I may lose loyalty I may lose lord knows what so now I look at the die rolls and this is actually really bad I could get this here as observation but I'd rather not so let's go ahead and just keep one of these and just re-roll everything we're just gonna take this quick shot there and then we can do this one here for point blank which is really awesome so five damage let's do that and then after that let's get this one here another shield oh, let's go ahead and re-roll this maybe get a sh yeah okay I got that so now I can get precise attack but now I got no shield so now it's like do I want shield or do I want attack right <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think shields aren't going to help me. Best offense is a good defense, I always say. So let's go ahead and do that. Hit that. No more rolls left. That's it. Because of my guys are stunned, as you can see, it's so debilitating. And as you can see, now, now that they're losing health, I will need medikits to bring them out. But if everybody loses health, then I lose. But uh, you're about to see that, actually. So let's go ahead and continue on. Quick shot. I might take one of these gorillas down with me. You're coming down with me, gorilla. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and re-roll this. Uh, this is terrible. I'm doing bad. I'm doing bad. No. All right, that's really bad. Okay, so 
Let's go ahead and do that. Faint, multi-attack, enemy stun. This is going to be great, actually. So I'm going to stun the enemies, and then I'm going to end the round. And then two of the dives are going to be stunned, but he's still going to be able to attack me. Now, now that people are going out, the, their die are actually going to be taken out from my attack. Used to I had six dice, but now I only have three dice. Only going to be my shotgun. Only one from my man Boyd McLean, and then another one here from a Farron Bubba. As you can see here, Charles Darwin, he's out. James Sterling, he's gone. See you later. So we're down to two guys left. That's really bad. Shotgun blast. Let's go and do it. Oh, that's it. All right, reroll. Reroll again. I think that's it. I can't do anything else. Oh, I'm in big trouble. He, they're going to kill me now. So that is it. Thanks for joining me here. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, this game is a pretty solid game. Now I will say that again, this is not as polished, as clean. I have crashed the desktop two to three times already in my 10 plus hours of playing. But as you see, two, two or three times over 10 plus hours, that's not too bad. But still, you know... A little bit of a worry here, but otherwise, yes, pick this game up. Definitely worth the 10 bucks that it's asking price. If you can get it for lower than that, more power to you. With that, this is the VG Pierce. Thanks for joining me again. If you like this, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like my videos, and hopefully, I'll see you guys next time.